Hello and welcome to another tutorial with me, Claire Ferguson Walker. Today we're going to be making the cutest, cutest thing. Um, look at this. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that little peas in a pod, all with different expressions, little emoji peas. Now I'm going to be teaching you how to make this out of air drying clay. Um, it's really simple, honestly, really quick, really simple and I'm going to be turning this one into a fridge magnet. Um, if you want to turn it into a fridge magnet, obviously you will need, along with your air drying clay, your acrylic paints, you will need some super glue and a magnet. Um, you might also want to get hold of some modelling tools. If you can't find any modelling tools, you can honestly use um, the back of a teaspoon the handle of a teaspoon is quite a good one and even a cocktail stick something like that um, and if you haven't got a cocktail stick even a biro will work so air drying clay acrylic paint some modeling tools a little bit of water and super glue and a magnet if you want to turn it into a fridge magnet otherwise you can just have it as a thing that you just have and take out at parties to impress your friends hey all Want to see my peas? Sure you do. Right, let's get on with the tutorial. Right, let's go. So, first of all, we're going to take out some of our air drying clay. And we don't need a huge amount for this project, which is good. And we can keep referring back to our original peas for reference. So we'll leave them there modeling themselves as they are. So we're going to make the peas first, the little individual peas. La -da -dee -dee -dee. And it's easy peasy peasy just to create the shape in your hand. That's way too big. Here we go. And we've got a little bit of water here as well that we can hydrate like that if it gets a little bit dry in your hands which it tends to actually skin will suck moisture out of things still a bit big now I've used four peas as you can see but you could use three you probably could use five depending <laughs> on how many or how few emotions you want to express. So, good idea to try and make them fairly uniform in size. Not as in they're all wearing a school uniform, as in they're the same size. <laughs> That's what uniform means. All the same. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Happy peas, shocked peas, sad peas, contented peas. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Don't worry about, you know, them being absolutely exactly the right size, exactly the same size as each other. The good thing about this is, obviously, there's no absolute right or wrong. Just using a bit of water there off my fancy tile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one's a bit big. How are we getting on? Oh, still a bit big. Still a bit big. And going a bit dry. Spray with water there. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about air drying clay well I say interesting it doesn't leave as much as a residue of a residue on your skin as normal clay which is quite messy and I don't mind the mess but some people really don't like it really don't like having their skin covered in clay 
So you can see the air drying clay does leave a bit of a residue, but it's it, it feels really different. It's very plasticine in consistency compared to normal clay. It's almost got a slight elasticity to it. So it feels ever so slightly like you're working with blue tack or chewing gum, something with a bit of bit of spring to it. <laughs> oh, look at that. I think I might have just, by the last one, nailed exactly how much I needed for each pea. No, it's too big. Sorry, little pea. You're having some removed. Me. <laughs> Stop complaining. Right, I reckon that's about there. Whoop. Dropped it, stabbed it. Let's have a look. How are they looking? Yeah, I reckon they're pretty good. I reckon they're pretty good. So because they dry, obviously, and in order to dry, they're going to lose moisture content, they will shrink slightly, um, which is fine. That's not a problem at all because they'll all shrink at the same time. So you, you're not going to end up with any cracking in the same way that you do, again, with, with normal clay. And it's interesting what's what's in air drying clay. This one, the DAS one's really brilliant. You can get some that has like nylon fibres in them. I'm literally just getting this moist, ready to turn into the little pea jacket. Um, yeah, nylon filaments, and you can actually sort of separate the clay like that and see them. And I guess you can in this as well. You can see that it's got that it's got something in there that's obviously going to make it hard when it dries. I don't know what magic they add to this stuff, but it, it dries really quite hard. It really hardens. There we go. So I am getting this good and squidgy. Now then you could, if you wanted, use um, a rolling pin at this point. If you wanted to get your jacket really sort of very flat but to be honest I'm not going to I'm just going to use my fingers to pinch open the shape because I think I want people to be able to do these projects with as few tools materials as possible obviously you will probably get a more uniform finish if you use a rolling pin But I'm not bothered about that. I've no idea why I suddenly went West Country then. It just came out of me. <laughs> We're making some peas, my lover. <laughs> right, here we go. So we have got a vaguely oblongy sort of a shape. Okay. And as you can see, it's not perfect. It's not perfectly smooth or flat on either side and it really, really doesn't matter because we're going to neaten up that edge once we've got our peas in there. Right, now then, now is the question of whether or not we put the peas in the pod and then put their features on or whether we put their features on and then put them in. Now, I tend to veer on the side of putting your peas in first and then doing the features on them because they can potentially get a bit warped. Okay, just place our peas do, 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 all along like this. And as I say, we don't have to hold them in there with any slip or anything like that because actually they're going to be held in by the jacket. So I'm going to just trim it off slightly to create a neater edge to begin with before we even close it up. Just following that edge round. Just to, there, look, you get this nice, clean, smooth finish. Let's bring the whole thing up a bit. And the same down here, just getting rid of those kind of frayed edges. Brilliant. 
And as you can see, it's a bit leaf shaped, but it's not perfect. And here we go, we're gonna fold it up. Now I'm holding the peas in place there slightly. As I do this, oh, there we go. We're coming up, we're coming up. And it's a bit thick on top, so I'm gonna flatten it off again at the top up here. And the good thing about clay is you can always go back and change it before committing. There we are. I'm going to cut that down to size again now. Literally like making my own background humming music. <laughs> Here we go, we're going to try again. We're going to wrap the peas up in their little jacket. Ooh. Oh, that's looking good, that's looking good. I'm just going to pinch in there in the edges in between the peas just to follow the form of the peas a little bit so you get that real kind of naturalistic feeling that they're really kind of in there, snuggled in there. And then across and just pinch it together at the sides, pinch it together, pinch it together, take off the excess, take off the excess. And there we have got the very, very basic form of the peas in the pod. And you know what? Wouldn't even need to be neater than that really. I am going to just come along and I'm going to use one of my modelling tools here. Now, these tools that I'm using um, are called wax modelling tools and they're pretty cheap. You can get a basic set of wax modelling tools. That's what they call them online off of eBay or other sites are available. There we are, just neatening that edge, just getting it a little bit smooth. You can always use your finger as well, a bit of water. Mm. It feels so nice when it's all smooth. And we might end up with this one, getting what we got with this one, which is, look, one of my peas. Oh, it's not. I was going to say, one of my peas is loose. It is, look. So you could actually fiddle with it. It's almost like a little fiddle thing. <laughs> I messed with the wrong pea at first. Don't mess with the wrong pea. <laughs> but it's quite nice. It's like a little fidgety thing that you can play with. So yes, wax modelling tools. Got distracted there thinking about my movable pea. They're not particularly expensive and they're really good. You get pointy edges, you get ones for doing sort of angled work. And I don't know why they are particularly advertised as wax modelling and not clay modelling, but they're definitely far and away the best thing for clay. There we go. Look at this. We're basically there with our shape. I'm just going to neaten that up again at the edges. Brilliant. Nice. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. That's absolutely good enough. I keep saying that and then going back. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect. It must be perfect. I am a total perfectionist when it comes to modelling. Can't help it. Just am. Um, can't let it go. I'm like a dog with a sausage. <laughs> let it go. It's finished. 
There we go. Right, and I think we are ready to start modelling our little faces into the peas. Here we go. And you don't have to stick to what I've done. Obviously, you can do your own order. You can do your own emotions. You can do whatever you like. They can all be crying. They can all be laughing. It's up to you. Um, now's your chance to express yourself via <laughs> the amazing medium of peas. So I'm going to copy exactly what I've done over there, just so that you get an idea of, of how to do it. Now, I apologise if I make this look really easy. That's what people tell me. Oh, you just made it look really easy. I've been doing it for years. Right, here we go. Straight in there. No messing. We've got a nice, big, sleepy smile. There we go. And this one's got his eyes closed it's all blissed out. Mm. There we go. See that, number one? Can you see it? Brilliant. Right, and the next one is shocked. Oh, it's, it's like the wow emoticon, isn't it? This one. So we want a rounded edge. And one of these wax modeling tools got a bit of a rounded edge. You could use the back of a paintbrush for this. In fact, actually, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the back of a paintbrush because I reckon that's something most people will have at home. And check this out. Done. That's it. Easy. And then round shocked eyes. Big round shocked eyes. Mm. Just turning that round in there. Brilliant. Let's go back in and smooth that over. Oh, <laughs> oh that's quite funny. Eee. I reckon a cocktail stick would actually be the neatest thing to use or a biro. Biros are really good for, for just doing your bog standard indent. <laughs> indent. What a posh word to use for making a hole. <laughs> making a small hole. We're not talking about a macro indent here. <laughs> See subtitles for normal language. La -de -de -de. Oh, that'll do. Stop your messing. Right, we've got the shocked one. Right, next, we've got, he looks really worried. He's obviously not done any revision for his GCSEs, this next P. <laughs> he hasn't done his own work. This one definitely has. <laughs> this one's only just found out about it. <laughs> what? So, Mr. Worry Pants, we've got a sad mouth. Ooh, sad mouth. And we're going to make same little dots for eyes, but this time we're giving him, I'm just seeing if I can find a biro, which I can't. I just have to use my flipping actual modeling tools that I've bought for the purpose. So we're gonna give this one worried eyebrows. It's all in the eyebrows when it comes to worry and sadness. So there we go, we've got his little eyes. Little eyes. And now the worried eyebrows. And what you can do, if you need some help and some guidance with creating your little expressions, honestly, you can always look in the mirror, get a mirror 
and actually like pull faces and look to see what's happening with your eyebrows, what's happening with your eyes, what's happening with your mouth. And can you use those basic forms to express yourself? So worried eyebrows are up like this. Ooh, his eyes disappeared now. I really am going to have to go and find a cocktail stick. Mm. I'm so worried. There we go. Oh, and his eyes have virtually disappeared. So let's see if I've got something better to hand. I really haven't. Oh, yes, I have. I've just realised I've got a packet of incense right here. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you just have some joysticks to hand? I just happen to have them. Look, pointy end. Ooh, it's nice nag champa. This isn't in the official list of uh, <laughs> tools. But look, that's useful. I'll tell you what else you could use for this if you didn't have a cocktail stick or a biro is a bit of spaghetti. That would work. In fact, I'll tell you what, spaghetti is also really good as an armature for holding stuff together. There we are, look, we've got happy, shocked, sad. And then our last one is a grinning idiot. Brilliant. Right, and we're gonna carry on using our joystick that's now made the whole space. Smell like one of those lovely hippie shops you go into. Mm, back to perfecting the edges. Right, grinning idiot, here we go. So, in with the big smile, and we're just gonna open it up. We're just gonna open it up, open it up, open it up. And just by doing that technique of putting it in, putting the modeling tool in and pushing it down, I don't know if you can see, but, it actually gives the impression of teeth. Can you see that? It's just created the look of teeth inside its mouth. Genius. <laughs> Me, I am a genius. I'm really not. Right. And he's got really big eyes. Big, happy eyes. Yay! Ooh, heck, look at that. Dropped a bit of incense in it then. <laughs> there we are. Look at that. We're there, we've done it. So we are going to let this dry off and then we're going to come back and paint it. And we are back to paint our now dried off Peapod. So I have got two colours that we're going to use initially to paint and they are, let's have a look, whoop, sap green and titanium white. So the sap green is a Winsor & Newton and the titanium white is also a Winsor & Newton. And they're pretty good quality acrylics, but if you can't afford the really expensive ones, um, you can always buy a cheaper acrylic. And even if you have to use a couple of layers, they'll pretty much do the same job. So we're going to paint the actual peas first because they are a slightly lighter tone of green than the outside jacket. So we're going to just mix a little bit of our sap green with white, just to lighten it off. There we go. Just so there's that little bit of a distinction between the two colors. There we go, that's probably enough. And we can just slap it on there. Don't have to worry too much about getting it on the jacket because obviously we know that we're going to be going back over that with our darker green. 
And the reason that we would do the light colour first is that we'll be able to cover that lighter colour much more easily with a darker colour. So that's a top tip for painting anything really. Do your light colours first. Get right in there. We want to try and cover as much as we possibly can. And we actually are going to go in with a really teeny tiny brush to do inside the eyes and the mouth. Now you, you don't mouths, you don't have to, you don't have to do that, but I'm going to just because it creates a bolder look. Get it on there. Lovely jubbly. One last P to do. And then we're going to do our outer jacket in the darker green. Oh, I can hear my dog eating its dinner in the background. <laughs> and my cat meowing at the door. <sighs> At least you can't hear my children screaming from the basement. Only joking! There we go. Brilliant. I reckon that is a pretty good coverage. There we are. So we've got our green peas covered. And as I say, once that's dry, we will go back in with a very, very, very fine brush to highlight those eyes and mouths. And now we are going to do the darker green of the jacket. And we're going to have that wonderful problem <laughs> that you often get with painting an object that's not flat, which is how do you hold it to paint it all the way around? Um, well, the easy answer to that is, is that you don't really, and that your fingers might get a bit mucky, but, but let's give it our best shot. I will at some point have to put it down, that's the answer, and paint it flat on the table. So just carefully avoiding hitting those peas. And again, the beauty with acrylic paint is you can always layer it up. So if you do make a bit of a mistake and you hit a green pea, a lighter green pea with a darker green, it doesn't matter. Let it dry and then go back over it with the lighter colour, all right? So if I let my cat in, she will just jump up and try and join in the tutorial <laughs> by shoving her cat behind <laughs> in the camera or getting her tail in my face while I'm trying to give a tutorial. Oh, bless her. She has been fed. Don't have to message in. Oh, hamster. Her name's Ham Hamster. Ironic name for a cat, I know. I'll let you meet her at the end. I'll let her in. Brilliant. Do right up to the end. So I actually put this on the radiator to dry. And that was actually a slight experiment. I wasn't sure what would happen. I thought, oh, it might, it might crack it because it might dry it out a bit quickly. Um, but it hasn't. It didn't crack it at all. 
it just dried it off really quite quickly, which was what I was hoping would happen. So that's good to know, just in case you ever need to make <laughs> an emergency peas in a pod that needs to be done very quickly. You can always dry it off on a radiator without fear of it cracking. Unlike me, there's always fear of me cracking. Nonsense. Perfectly stable. There we go. Ready. And that's good. I think I haven't even hit any of the lighter peas of the darker green. Oh, I shouldn't have said that, should I? I'm probably going to do it now. Come here, don't run away from me. Oh, there's a bit in there that I can't quite reach with this brush. I have to go back in with a long, thin one. Brilliant. There we go. I'll do this last bit without actually touching it. Hello, we are back. So I have let both the, the different colors of green dry on our piece so that I can pick it up. And I actually gave um, the outer layer, um, the, the little jacket, an extra layer of the dark green, actually, because um, it looked slightly wishy-washy in some places. So it's had a little bit of an extra layer. And in fact, I can just see there's a really annoying <laughs> unpainted bit in there that I do remember noticing last time and not being able to get to. So I'm just going to Got on there with this teeny tiny brush that I've got to do the eyes and the mouths. Did that get it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, one tiny bit there. Oh my God. There we go. Done. Right, marvellous. So now we're going to do the eyes, the mouths and the cheeks. So this is just a case of getting the tiniest, tiniest brush that you can. And I'm using this really very, very, very thin one. Look, you can see how thin it is when I get it close to it. And we're using black, good old black. I think there are actually different types of black, aren't there, that you can get. Um, <laughs> which always makes me laugh. There's different whites as well. I love that. And different blacks. Which black are we using? Just black. <laughs> and I'm faffing about taking my time here, slightly watering it down ever so slightly, just so that it flows a little bit. It is water soluble acrylic, so it will flow a bit easier if you water it down. Um, Although, obviously, what you are losing in the watering down process is some of the sort of potency of the colour, if you like. Right, let's go. This is going to take a steady hand. And I might have to go in afterwards and touch up the green. If I make a mistake, which is... Likely. <laughs> Say which is not unlikely. Yeah, I've already gone over the edge there. Hey ho. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. I'm going to look at it from this angle. Ah, 
and because the pale green is dry and the black is wet if you do make a mess at this point you can actually just wipe it off with a slightly damp finger there we go Yay. that's good look we've done number one Moving on, this one's nice and easy. Mm. Oh, wow. And some of you might be really, really creative and you might want to do teeny tiny detailed eyes rather than just dots you might want to make little tiny actual eyeballs and stick them on you might also want to paint your peas different colors i know some people who do rainbow peas but me, I like the traditional green. Huh. This is highlighting how not brilliantly round these little eyes were. Hey ho. Oh, I'm knocking the camera a bit there. go that'll do looking suitably shocked just getting loading up my brush again with exactly the right consistency for this and the thing is you, you don't want your brush too loaded or it's gonna make a mess and go everywhere We've got to go in there with eyebrows and eyes. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're just so funny. Here we go, sad mouth. No. Cheer up, buddy. No. I've earned the right to be miserable. Nobody's going to change my mind. You do you, P. You do you. There we go. and the last one and I'm actually going to leave the mouth on this last one um, because hopefully you can see it actually does look like oh mind you saying that it's a bit it's a bit unneat just on the inside there so maybe we will just follow that line on the inside with the black I'm trying to avoid hitting the teeth. Still got the teeth. Just about. Oh dear, this one looks like he's been sucking on a black lollipop. <laughs> Have to get it in there. Or it just don't work. Mm. 
Yeah, that's fine. That'll do, donkey. That'll do. It went a bit more. And the eyes. Big black eyes. Brilliant. There we go. We've got our little pea family. Wow, he looks slightly evil at the end. <laughs> They'll never suspect me. Um, just going to do some cute little red cheeks now as well. And you can be quite bold with your red here, I think. Or you can go pink, it's up to you. But I think a bit of a bold red cheek works. I like the combo of the red and the green there. Just getting it up to consistency. And shocked person, you can definitely have some little rosy cheeks. Oh, so cute. Oh, look at that. It's just so cute. A little rosy cheek there for you. Happy one. Oh, I think you might be going a bit overboard with your blusher there. <laughs> it's nice to get it as neat as you can, but it doesn't matter too much. Nice rosy bit the other side. Here we are. Grumpy, you can still have rosy cheeks. Just because you're down in the dumps doesn't mean we forgot to put rouge on you. That's what we used to call blusher in the old days. Rouge, which I believe is French for red. Lastly, not leastly, evil pea. There we are. Oh, I love it. Just that little touch of red. Just brings them to life. Oh, they're so cute. They are so cute. Brilliant. Now then, we will put this to one side to completely dry off. Here we are. And I'll bring my old peas in. And I'm just going to demonstrate sticking the magnet to the back. Now, this magnet, as you can see, is fresh as a daisy. Actually, I've pilfered it, pinched it off the back of another fridge magnet that I didn't like anymore. So I have recycled and I've got myself some super glue. Now then, you might need to get some help off a grown-up. To do this job because super glue is very 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 sticky stuff and you don't want it sticking all over your hands your skin we once had to go to A&E because my grandma had stuck three of her fingers together with super glue silly grandma and this stuff's in a bottle like nail varnish, so you don't want to get this mixed up with nail varnish, do you? So, simple as that. Straight on there, I'm just going to sit it on it, like that, and hold it in place. Brilliant. And that, my lovelies, is the end of our tutorial. I really, really hope you've enjoyed yourselves as much as I have. I did promise that you could meet the cat at the end, 
<laughs> didn't I? But she's actually gone off. So next time. Bye bye, my lovelies.